Blog Talk Radio. Uh, you know what time it is. Time to hang here yeah. with Mr. Cool. With Mr. Kuba, with Mr. Kuba, with Mr. Kuba. Get the latest cool from Mr. Kuba, from Mr. Kuba, from Mr. Kuba. Hey, we're Mr. Kuba, with Mr. Kuba, with Mr. Kuba, with Mr. Kuba. Get the latest cool from Mr. Kuba, from Mr. Kuba. Welcome to the Big Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. Season 5 is going strong, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure um, you go check out the website, www.thebigscoopwithcoop.com, where you can hear episodes from Season 1 all the way up to Season 5. Uh, we're live right now on Facebook also, so make sure you tell your family, friends, associates, haters, tell them all. Go to facebook.com forward slash the big scoop with Coop. And you're hearing us worldwide also on blogtalkradio.com forward slash the big scoop with Coop. Um, also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at MCOOP317. Okay, guys, enough about me. Now, my guest today. My guest is a legend. Um, he has done so many things in the television and movie industry where. It'll take the whole show to name everything that he's done. But just to let you know, he's actually, you may have heard of Lou Grant. You heard of Mary Tyler Moore show. You've seen the movie Up. You've seen him. Um, you heard his voice on animes. He's done so much. And it's an honor to have him on my show, Golden Globe Award winners, nominations for so many different awards. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Mr. Ed Asner. Welcome to the show. Well, 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 well. What do we have here? Yes, it's sir. The coop. Yes, yes. How's your day so far? Uh, it was boring until I got on the phone with you, and I'll see if it's going to stop being boring. Hey, you already know it. <laughs> you definitely already know it. Now, uh, Miss Asner, we do on this show, we do speak about how you started in your career your success, give advice on how to get into your career, and so much more. And once again, like I told the guests that's listening worldwide, this right here for how much you've done in your career and what you've done for the television and movie industry, it, it'll take about three episodes to cover everything that you have done. Yeah. But we yeah. Always start, yeah, but we always start from the beginning, Mr. Asner. Um, when did you first realize that you wanted to become an actor? Uh, after I started my first play, which is in the University of Chicago, and I got hooked. I also started a relationship with an actress in the chorus, so they kind of sealed the deal. <laughs> nice. Very nice. So what um, what play was it that you was in? It was called Murder in the Cathedral by T.S. Eliot. A beautiful play, beautiful poetry. And I played nice. Thomas a. Beckett, the archbishop murdered by Henry II. Mm. That's deep. That is wow. Mm. And, and that was so was that your was that your first was that your first time being on stage? Well, I'm not going to, you know, I, I did a walk-on in junior miss in high school. Okay. I did radio plays in high school, and I loved doing them. But, yeah, it was my first time on stage to be real. Wow. Nice. And from there, you just knew that this was a career for you. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I was that's... possessed. <laughs> the devil made me do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice, Mr. Asner. Now, and you know what? And to be truthful, when you know and you get on stage and you have that feeling, I tell a lot of people, if you have a gut feeling about something and, and it feels good, run with it. And and I see what happened. You ran with it. And look at what you've done through your career. And the, and the thing is, your career is not over. So, I, I mean, it, it's amazing 
for what you have accomplished in this career that you in the career that you're still going on right now. But at the same time, it's asking her, what type of obstacles did you go through? You know, I know there's probably some hurdles, some obstacles that you went through to get to where you are today. Well, everybody who um, never hired me it had to be an asshole. <laughs> so I, I kept a long list, mm-hmm. and uh, I've never been able to pay them back. So I want to get in that position of power where I get to pay them back. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. And then I can get it off my chest. I need to lose weight anyway. Oh, gosh. Here you go. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you, Mr. Asler. Not at all. It definitely uh, is not. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you started crossing names off of your list already? No, I haven't gotten them yet. I haven't, oh. I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, avenged myself. <laughs> <clears throat> but when I get in that position of power, uh-huh. uh, then um, I plan to work, work quickly. Strike quickly. Nice. And I'm I believe your name you... down as we speak. Oh wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, Why took Evans. you so damn long to get to me? Um and you know what? I am so sorry. And yeah. yes, I deserve to go on the list now. I do. I, I definitely do. But the good thing is you're on the show and I got a feeling it's not gonna be the last time you're on the show neither. Because, like I said, it's going to take multiple episodes to to cover your full career. All right. How long that. you been doing the show? Oh, man, I'm in season five now, Miss Asner. My God. Yes, sir. Did, did you dream it up, or did somebody dream you up? No, sir. I dreamed it up myself. Um, With me, to make a long story short, uh, when I started this about five seasons ago, I told – I, I was watching television. I was watching Steve Harvey, watching other people, and – I've always been a fan of television, and uh-huh. I, I can I can do this. I've I've been in two movies, getting ready for my third soon, um, and I was like, I can do this. I can do this show, and I prayed about it, prayed about it, thought about it, did my research, and boom, there goes the bit scoop with Coop. So, my God. where are you? In North Carolina. Mm. Mm. Yes, mm. sir. Mm-hmm. My God. So, <laughs> yes, sir. Now, Mr. Asimov, let me ask you this. Do you feel that it's easier to get into the television and movie industry now compared to 10, 20, 30 years ago? Well, there's so many venues that are making movies here, there, everywhere. Low, low budget independence all over the place. But um, getting into the movies in the beginning doesn't mean you're involved in a continuum. You gotta mm-hmm. struggle for every step. Keep repeating your success from one film to another. Then finally you'll make the dent and impress people. But um in the old days um it's like there used to be three networks that were um uh, Limited film companies, mm-hmm. and you you did the right job on the right film, and you struck a chord immediately. But I would say it was easier in the old days. I believe that. I definitely believe that. But do you do you think with these with the new days, like compared to now? with social media being being out there and people just grabbing iPhones and starting to shoot and they're not hauling around the big cameras like they used to. And, you know, back in the day when they actually put everything on film and, and before the digital world came, do you, do you feel like it's easier now compared to then as far as it goes for the construction of a movie? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, uh... We've got all different kinds of film now, all different kinds of cameras, lighting, which um, covers a lot of areas. Uh, uh, so they've uh, they've learned to create variables, right? And they work. That, that's true. That's very true. 
And, you know, I asked myself why, and I, I mean, I understand, you know, it's, it's the digital world. Everything has changed from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even the early 2000s from, I mean, not just from filming, even from the acting perspective, things have changed. Um, and what I mean by that, you remember back, like, like Ms. Asner and people that listen to Worldwide, um, I you might start that, calling me Ed. Uh, oh, well, I got you, Ed. I was telling Ed, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that I'm, I'm a fan of classic television and I was watching the Mary Tyler Moore show. I was watching all these different shows that Ed did and looking at and doing my research, how things were put together compared to now, it seemed like it's a breeze now. And and the acting perspective also, because people can take on so many different roles, like you already know, Ed, because you've you've done so many different roles. And it, it seemed like with these reality shows coming out and all of this, it's like the sitcom days are dying out. And I really wish it wasn't because I'm a fan of sitcoms. So I, I hope they actually come back strong. But, you know, it's just things like from actors, people are getting a little too comfortable because – you really don't have to act these days, especially in reality shows. You just be yourself and just put a little spike or twist on it, and that's all you have to do. Was it personally for you, Ed, was it like that for you back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Yeah, of course. Re- reaching out always. One, 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 one stop shop. Make connections. Mm. And then do a successful little cameo in one film. The star likes you. He wants to have you do another, maybe larger cameo in the next film. Everything pays off. Gotcha. Um, yeah, the old saying, there are no small parts. Right. And I'm glad you said that, Ed, when you said there's no small parts. Um, you've done a lot of big parts. Once again, are, are there any particular movies or shows that stick out to you that you would say that you would love to go back and do all over that you've done already? Oh, God, no. I got away with it the first time. Why would I want to <laughs> risk it? <laughs> you, you don't think you could pull a Lou, Grant, a, a Lou Grant again? Oh, yeah. But who knows? Maybe, maybe my choices this time would be different and it's a different time and maybe people's tastes have changed. I don't know. Well But it didn't me, wouldn't make any difference because doing the character is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Doing those those stories. Revealing the corruption and and uh, the crime that existed at that time. It's always it's always good material, no matter when uh, how you do it. That's that's true. That's true. Um, now, Ed, for the people that's new, that's young, that's listening to this show right now, that is actually getting introduced to Ed Asner for the first time, can you? Uh, let's. I want you to give them a history lesson. Can you tell the people that's listening worldwide some of just some of the shows and movies that you have um, been in, appeared in, starred in? Can you just give us a small list? Well, there was Daniel. There was JFK. There was um, El Dorado. There was Elf. Mm -hmm. There was um, Up. Um, Hell, I don't know. What did I leave out? I made a few more. Well, I'm going to name one. What's yet to come? That's true. Now, I'm going to name one show, and Ed, I want you to tell me your personal experience about being on this show. And and anybody that's young that's watching this show right now, YouTube this show that I'm about to tell you about. Look it up. Google it. Find it. This was a good show. And tell everybody about your personal experience being on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Well, it was seven years of the of bliss. <laughs> Hello. Oh, the line, the line. Yeah. 
Um, let's see, the bliss. I, um, I, I kind of stayed away from comedy in, uh, in Los Angeles film. And, um, I, um, I had done it on stage, but, uh, I always worried about it because uh, I was so undeveloped at the time. I'd go on and do a performance one night in a comedy and be a laugh riot. And then go on the next night and be a flop. I didn't know how to master the comedy. So that Edmund Gwen, as he was dying at the motion picture home, he was in an oxygen tent, and a famous director came to see him, and he said, how's it going, Eddie? And uh, Eddie said, um, well, it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough, Jack. It's tough. He said, um, uh, comedy is, is hard. Um, dying is hard, but it's uh, it's not as hard as comedy. Mm. Mm. That's that's wow. that's what I learned with finally being cast in the Mary Tyler Moore show. It's hard, but you keep doing it, and you don't stress it too much, and you don't fall in love with your delivery, you learn about timing, timing. And um, we had brilliant writers. We had brilliant writers, and we performed with three cameras in front of an audience of 300 people. They Mm. provided the laughs, and they gave us the, the laughs to work off of. Nice. Now, now, Ed, you just taught me something new right here because I did not know there was 300 people that was right there in the um in the studio. I knew there was people there. I knew it was shot in front of a live audience, but I did not know it was 300 people. Yeah, and and that's that's kind of deep. What you said earlier also about dying is harder. Than doing the comedy, or actually no, comedy is harder than comedy. Hard. Yeah, that's that's deep right there. That really is, and I believe, and I believe it too. But you know what? And I applaud you, Mary, all of you, because you all kept it, even if it was hard for you guys. You all kept it so professional where you couldn't tell. It seemed like it was natural. It definitely seemed like it was natural. For well, everyone as else. Tom Shales wrote in the Washington Post at the time we ended our run, he said, uh, this was a wonderful bunch of losers. And that's what we were. We were losers. And people liked to, to watch these people that they liked who were losers in life, but winners in, in terms of audience satisfaction. Go a little deeper in that one, Ed. Why would you all say that you all were losers in life? Why would what? Why would you say that you all were losers in life? What, well, was, what was going on back then? Mary was a beginner, of course. Um, oh. uh, Sue Ann had failed at a lot of places, I'm sure, before she ended up on our TV show. Okay. Um, um, Murray was a wannabe novelist. <laughs> Lou came out of uh, newsprint and longed to go back to it, but he was stuck on a cowboy station. So wow. that, and then Ted Baxter, of course. Mm-hmm. Obvious that he was a loser. So, who who was a winner in real life when you look at it from that respect? 
and I, I see I see where you're coming from on this head. I, now I do, since you you broke it like that. And to be truthful, you all converted yourselves into winners at the end. And and that's one thing that no one converted ourselves into what? Into winners. Mm. At the end, you did. Because if if people were flopping before the show, and they came on the show, and this became one of the most successful shows that was watched during that time, there's, I mean, it, you all gained a lot of fans, and a, a lot of and y'all, you all made noise back then. Yeah. So. Well, for instance, Mary Mary wrote a, a piece at one time. And I was looking at it, and I pulled out a book from my drawer where I kept my bottle. That's proof enough I was a loser. Um, and I said, that, he said that's, that's, that's not writing. I said, this is writing. And I read from Raymond Chandler's book, I think it was, it was a Red Dawn. I'm not sure what the name of the book was. And it's about the Santa Ana's blowing in Los Angeles, the time when wives take out the knife from the kitchen drawer and they feel the edge of it. And they think about running it across their husband's throat. Mm. And... Uh, he said, that's writing. And of course, wow. Lou was right. That was writing. I, I see. I definitely see. Do you still do you still have that book? Do I have the book? Yes. No, I don't have the book. This is okay. Lou did that on set. Oh, that was on was set. It my book. I thought it was behind the scenes. That was on set. Uh, okay. It was Lou's book in his wow. desk. Wow. Got you. Got See? you. See? You watched when you thought it was real. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's wow. That, that's all I can say about that. I did not know that was actually on set. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you all had a bunch of characters up there. Um, on the Mary Tyler Moore show, and once again, like I said, um, I'm not trying to sound like a repeated parrot, but Ed, thank you once again for everything you have done in this industry. Um, one question I do have to ask you that I do want to know also: How did you actually get into anime? What what made you go that route? Well, I I, I, I love doing I, I love radio, and I I love doing books until they stop calling me. Mm-hmm. So I, I love anything with voice. Started with voice, and I, I probably end up with voice. But um, anytime I can get a voiceover on a cartoon, or narration, or a book, I love to use my voice. So there you have it. Nice, very nice. And I think you've done stuff from, from what DC Comics or Superman, um, all the way up. I think yeah. you and so I mean you have done a Ooh, lot. Boondocks. In, yep. Freakazoid. Wow. They don't even show um, Freakazoid. I wish um, they did. Um, who was it? Um, not Batman. <clears throat> who is the? Um, I can't remember what cartoon I'm trying to think. Of. Yeah. Superman, I did a Granny Good. Uh, it goes on and on. Yes, it does. And like I said, it's going to take a few episodes to go through every one that you've been through. Um, now, Ed, here's something that for the people that's brand new that's learning about you right now, and this question also is for the people that knows about you that's been following your career. Um, are there any other awards that you're aiming to win beyond the five Golden Globe Awards that you've won and the uh, um and the numerous other awards that you won. Is there anything that you're aiming at award wise no. now? No. 
But, you know, I've, I've been on Broadway a few times. I've never won a Tony. And uh, I certainly haven't won an Oscar. So um, being in a position to win either one of those would be a, a great accomplishment, but I'm not... Uh, I'm not getting out of breath trying to get them. Okay. Do you, I'm about to say, do you have any room on your shelf for the award? For how much I, you've done? No, I, yeah, I got a lot of other crap on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and that's what I thought. Now, um, I know earlier, Ed, we was talking about social media impacting far as it goes for the movie and television industry. Are you personally heavy, um, heavy on social media these days? Well, I think it's a wonderful way to discuss and attack a problem. And whenever I yep. can further the assault on a bad problem we're afflicted with, I'm all for it. Nice. <clears throat> so, so oh, how he- excuse me. Sure. No problem. So, how can people find you on social media? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Hunt and Peck. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell them good... to call you and you can call me. Hey, hey, nothing wrong with that. Definitely nothing wrong with that. But here's one way people can find you online. That's the beauty of YouTube, um, different streaming services, Netflix, Hulu. If Ladies and gentlemen that's listening worldwide, if you all want to, if everyone want to hear how Lou is actually, um, I, I call him Lou Grant. Wow. That's how you know I'm a fan. Shame, um, shame, shame. See, if you all want to hear how Ed is actually doing far as it goes for voiceover, um, check out the animes. You can find them on Netflix, DVDs, Hulu. You can find them everywhere. YouTube got the Mary Tyler Moore show. You can find up. You can find a lot of things. If you just go to IMDB or if you just Google Ed Asner and see what pops up, I hope you have time to sit down and read everything because it will take you a while for everything that he's done. So um, find it, learn his work. People that's trying to get into the um, business now, I would tell you personally, look how Ed started. Look what Ed has done. He is versatile. Make sure you be versatile also. You can't stick with just one thing, and that's it. There's no way to be successful in the movie industry off of just one angle, one character, and that's it. So make sure you do go check it out. Check out everything that Ed Asner has done. Um, Now, Ed, is there any other projects or any future projects that you're working on or starting to work on that you're allowed to talk about? Well, allowed. I'm, uh, I talk about whatever I want to talk about. There you um, go. I'm uh, uh, going to be doing uh, on stage a uh, play that Sam Joseph wrote about God. Okay. And a couple who go to appear in front of God. I play God, of course. Wow. Um, and uh, we're going to do it on stage, and then... Uh, we're going to film it. And, okay. Uh, I have uh, high hopes that that'll uh, be successful, and we'll be able to uh, exhibit it at a lot of places. Nice. Um, is there anywhere that people can actually go and watch it live on stage? Is it going to be in certain cities, or is it be traveling, or is it going to be set in one spot? No, it'll be set in one spot. Okay. I'm not sure where it'll be. Well, one of the studios here will do it after we do it on stage. Okay. And um, it'll be a lot like love letters uh, mm. with the script um, and looking at the script. But it's funny and it works well. Nice. And and what is the name of it again for everybody that's uh, watching and listening worldwide? Oh, you would have to ask me that, damn it. Yep. I just, had to throw it on you. It's um, something like God has secrets or God, oh, God, t- God reveals all. God reveals all. 
ladies and gentlemen listening worldwide that's watching live on Facebook, YouTube, and everything, look for this when it drops out. Look for it. God reveals all. You can actually still Ed, see Ed doing his thing. So make sure you do check it out when it's actually available. I know I'm going to watch it. Make sure you watch it too. Now, um, we will take yeah. names and we know who you are. There you go. You already know it. I got my pen and paper in my hand right now. <laughs> I'm going to be holding it for the whole time. <laughs> now, um, Ed, what is your ultimate goal as an actor? To live. Can't act if you're not alive. Mm. Mm. Wow. Now, so you know, I'm a, getting old. Did you know that? I didn't recognize uh, that. Huh? I said I didn't recognize. You didn't recognize that? No, sir. No, sir. To All me, you have to do is put me in a dark room and turn the lights off. <laughs> then you'll see how old I am. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Boy, am I I'm, unsteady. But if you yeah, show me where the bread might the bed might be, I'll find it. As long as you promise to put something in it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, Ed, I'm sorry, I'm always going to see you as Mr. Lou Grant. You I mean, not only as Mr. Lou Grant, but that's that's the image I have, and I'm sorry. That's something that, like I told you, I'm I'm old school. I'm I'm a classic person, um, and I remember. And like I said, I've seen a lot of things that you've done. I've and I'm an anime fan. I've heard a lot of things that you've done. So trust me, I you say you're getting old, but at the same time, there's a lot of work you still can do. A lot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Trust. Me. Yes, but, uh... it's definitely. But uh, I won't be here today, gone tomorrow. I'll put it that way. Okay. Well, I definitely understand. But, Ed, the I'm, I'm, thing is, your work will always live on regardless if you say, I'm done with this career or something happens. Your work will always live on. You left a legacy. You, you've you left something that a lot of people can watch and see and hear. So you've done it. I mean, you're a legend in this business, and nobody can take that away from you. No one at all. Um, now I make you Ed, an I know, official bro. Hey, there you go. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll take. I will definitely take. Yes, sir. Now, Ed, I know you're a busy person, so I'm not going to hold you up much longer. But what advice would you give any male or female that wants to become an actor or actress in the movie or television industry? Talk to every actor and director that you can find. Put yourself on any stage you can find. Learn about everything that goes into making a stage presentation. I'm talking about sound and lights, wardrobe, direction, anything. The same applies to film. Go where they're shooting. Volunteer to to be a gopher. Learn by being a gopher. And parlay it into the next step and the next step and the next step. Let's keep learning. It's all a learning experience. And that is so true. That is so true. Well, everyone that's listening worldwide, make sure you do take that advice because I think that's a valuable piece right there. Get in where you can. Learn. Knowledge is the key in this business. You can't just go in and say, well, I watched television shows when I was younger, so I know I'm a certified actor because I can repeat a lot. It's not like that, guys. Make sure, or ladies and gentlemen that's watching, make sure you learn your craft, get in where you can, continue to learn. Because trust me, in in the movie and television industry, what I've known, um, things rapidly change. So you cannot say, I know it all, because there's no way you can. Things have changed and will continue to change. So, Ed, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show again. And I I Thank you, and I would love to have you back in the future. I'll be there. All right. Ed, make that sure means you have I a... got a future. Hey, we, I been told you that anyway. Hot damn. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ed. You have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time on the Big Scoop with Coop. Uh, you know what time it is. It's time to hang out yeah. with Mr. Coop. With Mr. Cooper, with Mr. Cooper, with Mr. Cooper, ladies, cool. From Mr. Cooper, from Mr. Cooper.